Hello everyone, today I want to show you a little example of a solo that I want to play over a really cool four chord loop, a funky chord progression, um, very typical in funk styles, and it's just um, in concert, it's going to be B flat major 7, A7, going to D minor 7 and G7, right? So this is how that sounds. All right, cool. So what I want to show you with this specific solo is I'm going to be using three main devices. I want to show you the magic of building your own melodic cells because I'm going to pretty much use two melodic cells of the base of my solo over those four chords. Then I'm going to use a little bit of chromatic approach and then basically the pentatonic or blues scale. And I'm going to mix those three elements and I'm going to create a really cool solo just based on those three elements, right? I'm going to construct melodic cells really basic just using the chord tones or the inversions, right? Which I talk on my um, melodic cells and chord cycles training. Oh, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you now how to play the chords. If you have a four chord loop like this, how to first play it in root position, first inversion, second, third, etc. And then how you can manipulate it to create really cool melodic cells, basic ones, but actually pretty melodic and effective. Then combine it with the blue scale. So here are some of the resources. First of all, I'm gonna play the four chords, just rubato, on root position, so you hear how it sounds for the tenor. Now for the tenor sax, it's going to be C major 7, B7, E minor 7, A7, right? That's how they sound in root position. Now let me just play it on first inversion so you get the sound. It's pretty cool. I love doing that. Just grabs a chord progression played all in first inversion and it already sounds a lot more melodic. Okay, so starting on all the thirds. Right? And you can keep going, you can do a second inversion, right? Which would be... Starting on the fifth. And of course you can do that ascending and descending. Right, and then third inversion starting with the seventh. Those are all great, and you can start developing your melodic cells based on those. But I love first inversion. Let me talk about first inversion first. I'm gonna approach all the thirds. So, what I'm gonna be using right now for this solo, you're gonna hear them pretty clearly because I'm going to rhythmicize it and I'm going to use a lot of other motivic development and a lot of devices that I teach on my melodic cells and chord cycles training. But this is just a little example. So here's the cell that I'm going to use. Uh, it's going to be two. The first one is just I'm going to play first inversion, but I want to change the order of the last two notes. So instead of being three, five, um, seven, one, it's going to be three, five, one, seven, generating a fourth, the interval of a fourth. So this would be regular first inversion with the little change I did. That's already a beautiful melodic cell. It's, it's not an inversion anymore. It's based on an inversion, but now it becomes a little pattern, a little melodic pattern. So if I apply the same rule for the entire chord progression... sounds beautiful like you can see how if you apply some rhythm schematic approach it's already a beautiful gorgeous melody that's one of the melodic cells the other one i'm going to use is i'm going to do again a first inversion starting with a third but i'm going to skip the second note and i'm going to put it at the end and up the fire to extend the range of my melodic pattern so uh, it's going to be three then i'm going to jump all the way to seven one and then five all the way up here so again regular first inversion sounds like this with this change, I'm going to skip that, mid, that second note. Right, so it's still first inversion, but just by octave displacing and changing the order of that second note, putting it at the end of an octave higher, it already sounds like a beautiful lush melody, right? Applying that to all the chord progression. I love it. 
it just extends the range and also becomes a lot more expressive because now we have more than an octave and a half before we just had an octave. So those are just two melodic cells that I'm going to mess around with. And then uh, I'm going to play a little bit of chromatic approach. I'm not going to talk too much about it. If you want more details about chromatic approach, you can get my chromatic approach exercises and you can look my video about using chromatic approach on YouTube for free. So check that out. But for now, I'm just going to do like basic two approach notes, meaning a double descending or double chromatic ascending, some sort of a double or an enclosure, two important chord tones like the third, right? So if I'm in um, concert D minor seven, I might want to approach that F, right? Right. right, I'm just kind of playing with chromat two chromatics below, two above, just around it to create more notes and so that I can play actually a longer phrase, right? Like, let, let me play just a quick inversion combined with chromatic approach. <laughs> Just beautiful. Now, it does take time to manipulate chromatic approach properly, but you'll get into it and watch that video. It's going to be really helpful on YouTube. Okay, it's called Using and Applying Chromatic Approach by me. Um, okay, so last resource I'm going to use for this solo is just the blues scale, D minor blues scale, E for the tenor. <laughs> That's it. Combining with everything. Because if you did only the blue scale, it's like a little more amateur, a lot of the blue scale, you can sound okay. But then when you combine the chromatic approach and you combine the chord, this melodic self, it's like you're being so melodic for a second and then back to the blues. So I love with this kind of funky chord progressions where it's minor, like this one is in D minor, even though it starts, you know, on the flat six. You can play the blue scale all over it and it'll sound fine. But this is just so that you can now apply your melodic self. Be with the chord, but not just play inversions or not just play chord tones, but be playing the melodic cells is a better way to play the chords on a much more musical and melodic way. So you're actually extracting melodies from chords. That's the cheat. That's the code. That's the secret. So uh, I really encourage you to check out my melodic cells and chord cycles. If you like this and if you like the sound, I go really deep into how you can create your own melodic patterns and transpose them and put them on all sorts of different context so you can grab that and now put it in the circle of fifth circle of major thirds and then create your own chord progression and apply it to that with dominance major chords and all of that i start with major chords because it's easier but you can apply this on everything and ultimately end up with very sophisticated phrases that will be authentic to you the idea is that you create your own little exercises your own little phrases so that you can actually sound like you like the great players do okay so i'm going to show you the solo now and i hope you enjoy it and try to identify those melodic cells. Right? Eh? Try to hear it, try to see how I use the rhythm and stuff. I do also show you how to use rhythms on that training. So you're really gonna love it. All right, uh, see you in the next video. Take care, bye.